Hey, Peter. What's up? We're talking Larry's today. You ready? I love a lot of Larry's, but I love this Larry, I think, the most. Of all the Larry's. Is this the greatest Larry? I mean, he's great. I'm Adam Manis. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. Two pianists, one a little more positive, one a little bit more negative. I was going to say, different no, talk, uh, just talking about music. Today, you are positive Pete, and I might be antig- antagonistic Adam That's or a something. Bit, yeah, a little bit. bit. Aggravated Adam. As- <laughs> <laughs> like hey, you no, know. you're coming around. You're coming you around. can't always bat a thousand. But, you know, uh, with- <laughs> I'm hoping to get changed around today because we're talking about one of my favorite musicians. I thought this alive. might be a smile on your face. Yeah, I love this dude. Yeah. Larry Goldings. Okay, so we were debating right before the pod started. First of all, welcome in. Much love, fam. Yeah. Um, but we were debating, not debating, we were discussing violently with gloves on. Now, we were d- just debating a little bit whether or not folks would know, well, we know some folks, if not many of our illuminated, illustrious, and highly uh, er- eruditious and educated listeners oh, and viewers, eruditious. what's that's up? That's like the, that's a... I don't think it's right, so don't don't okay. go back to that. <laughs> like if you're... Er- er- like er- an erudite. Er- exactly. But eruditious, I've never heard of Well, you got to go on an aeroplane oh, to find that. Oh, boy. No, but I think a lot of our Had listeners and our it. viewers... Had it and you lost <laughs> it. <laughs> um, will, of course, know Larry Goldings. I mean, he's just like one of the badasses pianist of our generation yeah um but i think quite a few folks that are, that are in the know actually will not know who he is they might recognize him but he's a little bit under the radar i mean as much as you can be for like doing huge tours yeah i was gonna say john mayer and christina aguilera but he's a real like jazz og well yeah and, and I piano think, og too i think what's so special about larry goldings is that he doesn't conform to like what you think right someone like if we start off with playing maybe something with him and bill stewart and uh, oh, I got a good Peter old Bernstein. One. I got a good like, old school one. Someone who plays with that kind of organ trio, right? Yeah. You wouldn't expect to have a comedy alter ego that's so right. legit hilarious, right? Well, that and yeah, and that we have. We'll, we'll get into that too. But yeah, the the musician and then right. he's super funny. And then he also does all this quirky music at his home, which he's surrounded by all these quirky keyboard yeah. instruments. And he's instruments. kind of a renaissance he's man, a renaissance. almost mean, like it's... vaudeville in terms of like really high level of musicianship. Yeah. He can sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and but his roots, and I mean, you know. Full disclosure, I've known, I actually met Larry like the second day, maybe even the first day I got to New York wow. in 1987. Ever heard of it? Mm-hmm. When I was going up to go to school there, yeah. uh, he was in the very first class at the new school, your alma mater. That's right, yeah. Alma mater. Yeah. Um, don't know if I'm saying that right. But uh, he was in the first class with a very illustrious class, um, Mike Warner, Spike Warner from St. Louis. Uh, and that's actually how I met him. And I remember... Larry Goldings was living in this really cool one-bedroom apartment on Fifth Avenue in the village right by the new school. Nice. And he had a piano. He had a Steinway, I think, like upright or something. I was Sweet. like, man, you know. Yeah. I was like bouncing from like rooming with people. And I was like, and he could play yeah. already then. And he was funny and a super nice guy. Yeah. Uh, I think he's from Boston originally. But um, anyway, so a I always. Funny, funny folks from Boston. You notice that? Funny, like, it's, a, yeah. it's outsized how right. many funny people are from. It's actually outside, outside of the Borscht Belt, but it's still very funny. Yeah, so Did there that. you go. Okay, so let's just play some of his music, and then we'll tell a few anecdotes um, about him and just try to get to the breadth and depth of, you know, sort of just some of his talents, not everything. So this is, um, and actually, Peter Bernstein was, in, I met him right the, that very first day, too. Peter Bernstein, incredible incredible guitarist, friend of the pod. Friend of the pod, been on yeah. the show, yeah. And he's had this longtime trio with Bill Stewart. It's funny because they call it Bill Stewart trio, but I mean, over the years, it's been. It's like all three of them. It's all three of them, yeah. it really is. Larry Goldings, Peter Bernstein. And this one's, I mean, this is going back. This is uh, 1997. So this is, of course, Larry Oregon. A young Larry Goldings. Oh. Kind of like so you know, swinging. That's where a lot of people sort of first heard him, even more than on piano. I remember in the '90s, like he was yeah. really known. He toured uh, around this time, well, maybe a little bit after this, 
with Maceo Parker. Yeah. I remember seeing him at North Sea Jazz Festival. He had just gotten the gig. Yeah. And was just like grooving his ass off on that gig and really became known um, as an organist. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, keyboard, piano, of course. Um, but I think to, to a lot of folks, this is exactly what they first heard him doing. That's when I actually first discovered him. I didn't see him with Maceo. My dad saw him with Maceo at Union Station outside oh, yeah. in like the summer of 90 whatever. Yeah. And for, I, for some reason I couldn't make it or I wasn't able to there. And I was like, oh, well, what was it like? Because I was, I was just getting into James Brown's music then. Yeah. When Maceo played with, of course. And uh, he was like, there was this guy on the organ who was unbelievable it was like larry something and we looked him up and, and discovered him and yeah man that's cool Killing. okay so another thing that he did i think a lot of people saw him there here was, but a lot of jazz was, was that sorry, this, is no. most, this is the most <laughs> this is the most jazz piano podcast button i've ever put on a sentence was just like yeah man yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly you don't know yeah, what man. else to say anyway well you, you need to make it awkward until you actually Kind of look backwards on it and highlight it. I feel better about highlighting. I'm glad we don't. uh, I'm glad we don't edit this thing. Okay, ever heard of him? Ever seen him? James Taylor, one of the greatest. So uh, Larry's had a long time association. Up, I mean, actually, he was just playing with him the other night on the on the Colbert show, uh, accompanying James Taylor. But he's been his MD for a long time and played with him. And it's such a cool thing because I think most people, kind of not necessarily on a podcast, but most people in the general public, the GP as we call it. Uh, would know Larry just vaguely as being the pianist. But they did this thing, and I remember seeing this live uh, a number of times around this kind of mid-late 2000s in the aughts where it was called um, James Taylor. It had a very successful tour, an album called One Man Band. And the funny thing was, it was actually a two-man band. With Larry. Well, it was kind of a one-man band, and James Taylor used to joke about this, how like Larry was the one-man band. Right. And he, you know how like self-effacing... Uh, James Taylor is he's just like I just play a few chords and sing some pretty stuff you know yeah, yeah. and that Larry was you know playing keyboards and harmonium and and piano beautifully but this is just a little snippet that I found and I remember seeing this like I said this tour and it was really a special thing I mean if you know Larry this is some very simple playing that he's doing kind of an antidote to what we just yeah, but he's heard. the greatest oh he's this. so great at this I know. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then look, he's already doing his humor stuff, you know. Multi-talented Mr. Larry Goldings, Larry Goldings. I mean, I could listen to him do this stuff. Touch. Oh, yeah. No one better with a triad than Larry Goldman. And it's almost like really great. It's kind of coming out of the show piano, like Broadway pianist tradition a little bit. But like the most refined, almost Keith Jarrett-esque. Voice leading. Touch. But I mean, but this is a guy that can just rip through bebop on the piano. That's what I first heard him doing. It's really inspiring, actually. Yeah. But to be able to have that kind of control, because I would be like, you know, Oh, we know. We know. Oh, we know. And I become like a Larry Golding's, you know, a, a meme or something. So, oh, we know. Yeah. But, I mean, it takes a lot of control to be able to do this. And this is like improvised. I mean, this is not written out. Plus, you got to be able to nail these songs in a way that's like interesting. But the James Taylor's fans, they're very peaceful. They're not going to want up, all the... Don't be messing the... up their tunes. <laughs> Don't, don't don't even think about a tritone substitution unless it's part of the tune. They don't need all that. They don't need all that. But anyway, we'll just listen a little more, but you can go on a deep dive if you like this. And James was always great about, you know, featuring him. But mostly it's just like the the, the pianism of what he's doing there, I think, is so great. Just the touch, the um I mean, you could see a transcription of that and a lot of people would be like, Oh, I can play that, but probably not like that. Well and, and to think about that. So you have a simple tune. Yeah. Can you create this, you know, this sort of church style arrangement that's right. very simple but the, very elegant in the way the voice right. leading is working? I mean, very Presbyterian church, very you, Presbyterian you, church. But I, or Lutheran, I'm a perhaps? sucker for. Well, oh, hey man, sucker. the Lutheran hymnal is solid. Yeah, a lot of that sure. is, is Bach and, and Martin Luther himself. Oh, I like the way you said it. Bach. It was very casual, but uh, <laughs> but that kind of playing is really appealing. 
Yes. To me. That's really yeah. fun. Let's peel back another layer of that appealing let's, playing. Let's please do. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, all right. What do you want to do? We want to hit a little bit of humor so now. So here's what I think is the most <laughs> interesting thing about Larry, right? Is like, so he's he he's in one of the great straight ahead trios of the last 25 years. Yes. He plays regularly with not just James Taylor, but James Taylor is yeah. certainly like the his most regular. Yeah. High, but he's also playing with like John Mayer John, yeah, and yeah. like a ton of high level. A lot artists, of big right? pop gigs. And then he does this. So, oh, okay. On Are the we, side. So, yes. Yeah? Oh, is, that, is this okay? The, so then he has this whole other alter ego, Hans Groiner. Which is like, and look, this is this is his alter ego, but this is like the OG jazz meme. This is pre-YouTube. I'm, I know, I'm sure it is, because I remember getting an e this via email, the whole video file, like the real player or something. Amazing. From Peter Bernstein. It was like, look what Larry did. And, um, yeah. Uh, my name is Hans Groiner. I am from uh, Austria. Beautiful. The what about editing? The city of uh, Brownell, the uh, home city of uh, Adolf Hitler. Uh, but, uh, don't hold that <laughs> against me. Larry? The little <laughs> smile. <laughs> the little smile after he says he's it. He's not afraid like, to walk. walk, walk oh, walk man. It's so, it's anyway, so subtle. It's so I good. I grew up yeah. uh, playing uh, accordion. <laughs> Very young, I think I was two. Look where they, I mean, did very, they go on location um, to, to Austria? It, no, that's in California. Of course, yeah, but, I mean, but uh, it was fun. I heard uh, the first jazz um, that I heard uh, when I was uh, seven. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not like it. Uh, for the most part, I still do not like it, but... When I was, I mean, this can someone brilliant. put this guy in a TV show or a film, please? No, it's so great. And this was before, you know, this was so early. It almost, I mean, this says it was uploaded 15 years ago, but this was longer. This was definitely before then. I mean, um, that's when YouTube was was online. It was 2007, right? I think so. Five, yeah. six, seven. Uh, yeah. But I'm telling you, I remember when this came because it was like the only thing that held it back from not being huger was it was pre YouTube. But then he gets into the... Try to f find the spots where I did not like the music, which Talk were many. Me. And um, I was going to fix Monk. He's going to fix yeah. Monk. Change. Right, right, right. Change. Make Monk better. Uh, yeah. I'll show you... There's a little bit uh, of shades of... Example of, of how, how, a little bit of shades of make Monk great again, like oh, in advance. <laughs> I mean, he's, you know, he's a funny guy, you know. I, he was ahead of his uh, time. I come to the concept of the Monk uh, interpretation <laughs> He's just with disgust. <laughs> oh, I cannot well. listen to more. <laughs> uh, just apologies to all of our Austrian fans too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big shout out to. Hey, I had a great time. And I was uh, with my family in Austria this summer, so it's all good. Okay. My now he's gonna fix it. Of monks, well, you needn't. I think you will like it as much as I know. I will. <laughs> He's still playing really well, though. The G yeah. chord just kills me. So funny. It's such a great choice. <laughs> He's fixed it. Oh, oh see, I even see. He's doing it back. I'm already kind of trying to hip it up. He's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Anyway. So that's the original but video. I mean, okay, so the idea is very funny, and I think yeah. uh, there's plenty of jazz to come up with an idea that, like that. <laughs> just blowing the start. What's in my uh, cup here? <laughs> I'm going to shout out to my new open studio gear. Um, <laughs> and some Tito's. No, uh, <laughs> like... T-don'ts, more, more like. <laughs> T-don'ts. But what... But the execution is what's so good. Yeah. He's, like, legitimately... Seen. Uh, and seen. A funny... <laughs> dude like yeah he's super funny so i got one it's more I, can i just do one more quick because he's done a bunch of things and he did this master class you were talking about um but this is from a little promo he did this is pretty recent well it says 2020 but i think it was yeah maybe it was that i can go <laughs> <laughs> why is this funny already <laughs> look, look how just light he's playing <laughs> and i don't think anybody's ever Quite done that. So the mic so. is clipping. <laughs> and I'll write a little introduction song for the master class. I just make these things up and then I walk right up the scale. And I stay diatonic because that's where. Was that a little allusion to James Taylor there? Just a quick one walk right up the. I'm so happy. And I know that you are. <laughs> you 
can do that minor right there because you're kind of... Mm-hmm. Kind of slipping in and out of the accent yeah. a little bit. Um, the importance of limiting what you know uh, what? to achieve a more universal sound. And I think it really is about <laughs> learning things and forgetting them. But second to that, it's don't learn them in the first place. <laughs> Say we have a minor chord, which I try to limit the use of the minor chord. <laughs> doesn't make me feel good. <laughs> um, it's a chord that I think should be used less in general. But if you're going to use it, say we are on the relative minor, and I think it's called the relative minor because a relative of the person who came up with this chord uh, told, uh, told them about this chord, and it's some kind of conversation that happened between relatives. You're going to want to be careful about the different type of... Oh, man, I can so listen good. to this stuff all and that's day. Not even, so that's just one of his characters. Do you have any of the other, uh, like the, what is it, the guy with the gig? ones those are so good oh yeah no uh, that's that's good because that's what i actually have so some folks yeah might have seen i i forgot that's what it's called that's right the guy with the gig because he does the 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 series yeah yeah yeah. yeah. so this is the this this was one was this during the pandemic he got creative you could tell yeah Yeah, okay okay we're gonna need the piano player Well, this is so great, too, because Larry has done so many, like, big-time gigs yeah. where you're like, oh, my God, I'm this great thing. But that's always the time when we can all relate as piano player. Then you're just the piano player, the, the keyboard player. Yeah, exactly. Like, keyboard player. Where's yeah. the keyboard player? Where's the keyboard player? player? We're about to do the national anthem. <laughs> Mr. Taylor's ready to go. you got to get in position. This is happening now. You're late as you. This is Larry. Did you bring the music? You didn't bring the music. Well, you're winging it, my friend. You're, you're lighting and everything. everything. You're winging it, my friend. Oh, my God. This happens Well, when some of this is from a... Like a Steven Spielberg movie. No, but he's no. lit to match. Oh, he wasn't in the movie? Oh. Oh, I think he played with Barbara Streisand too, actually. Uh, anyway, this stuff is great. Was there another uh, guy with the gig we want to do? There's or? a ton, but okay. yeah, you should check out his uh, Larry's own YouTube channel. If I may, Peter. Yes. I want maybe we can do some stuff that he's doing sort of closer to now. Because yeah, I got some good stuff. Some really interesting things happening, uh, even like this year. Yeah. So one of my faves. Can you bring yeah. my batch here? So he's been working uh, with this tap dancer, Melinda Sullivan, oh, yeah, and yeah, she's yeah, yeah. really great. And just yep. check this out. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> uh. Okay, first of all, just pause that. You got to take it back. So this, we're going to do a little bit of a cl- clinic here. The way he kicks off, I love Larry's time. I know. It's like, I mean, feel, everybody knows about his pocket. funk time, and I got some great organ funks. Like his pocket. There's no difference between the funk pocket and this. Exactly. Yeah. So this is like just a master class in um, how to just gently... But resolutely, just go. I mean, just listen to the way he count. I don't know if he's counting off or she's tapping, but it's just so right. It reminds me of Monk's actual version of this tune solo piano. I mean, not the even the way he's playing, just the way it just hits that groove. It's so oh. powerful. <laughs> oh, he's just like tapping his foot. But look how relaxed he is. Oh. Ooh, it goes up to the keys and the bass. A little chord bass there. She's swinging on that. Look at her, just yeah, yeah the little t- the toe. Tank to tang. Uh, very simple voices. We gotta get Larry on Open Studio coming soon, 2023. I'm committing you, Larry. I know you're watching this, Larry. Uh, I'm taking a picture to send it to Larry right now. Man, he's so stuck in the groove right now. Oh. Oh. Yeah, he's super monk influenced. So these two together. Yeah. 
Because uh, she, this is like some high level stuff for her too. The yeah. dynamics, the swing, it's not easy. This is at his crib, right? Yeah. All those little four-way close uh, voicing the triads. Oh, uh, man, this is like, woo! Yeah. And that comping, I mean, it's so like, it's monk, but it's surely horn too. Casey, Hank Jones, Eric uh, Garner. Hey, oh, for sure. So that's Larry and uh, Melinda Sullivan yeah. on the Thank kicks. You. Pretty great. So great. Okay, so I got something here. This just shows, I mean, we were talking about his versatility. We talked about that at the beginning, right? His versatility. Yeah. Um, and this is some more recent stuff that I think he's attracting a whole new sort of generation of fans with the scary pockets, you know, the scary Goldings project with Jack Conti yep. and some other folks, uh, Mono Neon, well, not on this and one, now, and Joe, John Schofield. Yeah, John Schofield yeah. and Mono Neon, and um, oh, who was on drums on that? I'm going to space on that, but this is like the OG. Lewis Cole. Lewis Cole. Lewis Cole. This yeah, is yeah. like the OG scary pocket. Oh, is that okay. I love this first record that they did. Yeah, and I, I mean, I grabbed this one because there's a lot of cool stuff. You can go down a deep, uh, beautiful rabbit hole on this, but this kind of gets right to it in terms of like, well, you'll hear uh. They have iMovie. <laughs> that's that's funny. That's funny. Uh. So, you know, I mean, tasty. Can, can we say that's tasty right oh, there? Super tasty. Can we say that's tasty? Sounds are amazing. But, yeah. You know, again, his pocket yeah. is like star of the show. Star of the show for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. And then I got a couple. You got anything else? That's it for I, me. I, I don't want to. Okay. This is kind of akin a little bit. Uh, this is super recent. I, I mean, like his stuff pops up and then I'm always seeking him out. But he posted this just the other day. Uh, and we'll link to all this stuff. And, and this is on the Larry Golding's channel here. When was this posted? Yeah, three days ago. Um, but this is a little bit akin to the These Foolish Things that you played uh, in terms of like, he's singing on here, which I hadn't heard him sing much, but his pocket, the way, he, I just want everyone to listen to like the way he goes in and out of the time. We talk about like, you know, you're, you're stuck in the, you know, on, the, on a swing groove or you're going robotic. Like he kind of eases his way in and out because he's got that, that great feel and that great confidence. And this is almost like just, incredible like oh i walked in the hotel lobby and like the greatest pianist and and vocalist not his vocals are not great in the way where it's like oh my god it's ella fitzgerald or right. but it's just it's just so right though Let the shut -ins, shut -ins. we'll stay in see the day in in the private way that we do let the riffraff and the rabble go oh. out. I'd rather be shut in with you. I mean, these voicings are like, this is super inside baseball right here, right? We'll say thanks, but no thanks. Uh. We'll I love people that can just play All really great stuff and make it seem so easy. I know. Like, you, know they make so you read blue. this, you'd be like, oh, this is all very yeah. easy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> just like the, 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 the timing of the it. Fall I mean, he's just messing around, too. That's the other thing. It's like the most unpretentious greatness, though. I'd rather be shut in mm. with you. And now he's starting to hint at that, that time, right? He's playing. Uh. We'll cook a good meal. We'll read our books. 
loud. I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. And we'll trade those loving looks. You know what this is? It's just like, you know, if you're having a party at your house and someone's like, oh, Larry plays piano. Oh, no, 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 no. No, he sings too. No, no, no. Oh, okay, fine. I'll go. And they, they just like sit. He just sits down. And everyone's like, holy shit. You yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. Like a party trick. Buttons. Do you know this tune? Cut I don't know this tune. Do you? No. No trouble in this bubble with a population of two. Let the hurry and the worry fade. I mean, you know, that's that's some high level right there. It's great. Stuff, it's some man. very, it's like subtly high level. It's, I love stuff like that. Hey, listen, we love Larry. Sue us. Sue us. We love Larry. <laughs> no, Larry, don't sue us for playing don't all your shit Larry. today. <laughs> Larry's well connecting in Los Angeles with the legal system. There, that's so. right. Okay, I have fun, one man. more thing. This is going to be a little surprise okay, for you. Okay, cool. This dropped like, uh, no, that's you there, my friend. That's not a surprise. Okay, this dropped an hour ago. Like Shout right before we were getting the, uh, Yamaha Reface. Is that what that is? I think it is? Okay, so this I just watched one time and I was like, okay, I'm all over this. Blueberry Hill. First of all, I was like, not Fats Domino Blueberry. I'm a big, big Fats fan, um, of course, in this tune. But this is so dope. We can just listen to it and maybe even roll out on it. Sure. Hope we, hopefully the copyright um, overlords of YouTube and Larry Golden won't take this down for us. But check this, check this out. Oh, wait a second. Let me get my thing up here. Okay. Anyway, big shout out to Larry Goldings. Thank you, Larry, we're, for we're, everything. We're bringing you on the pod. We're bring, well, he's doing a, a workshop for us, I think, next month. Yeah. Or is it this month at Open Studio? Yeah, I'm, it's this month. I'm super excited. So become stoked. a member. And you don't have to. I mean, you can become an Open Studio Pro member, but that's available to all members, right? Yeah, yeah. I believe, yeah. So check that out. We'll have a link below to become a member. Larry Goldings, Blueberry Hill. One hour ago. Breaking news. That was some fats right there. solo tour for Europe. Oh, really? Yeah. See, that's... Why, why can't he be an... I, well, he, he's an IG artist, right? He's an OG I, IG artist, no? It's not the same. Jazz, yeah. jazz club camera setup. Yeah, <laughs> surveillance video. I found my three.
I am in Steamboat Springs, Colorado currently. I'm in Indianapolis. Hey, how's it going, guys? Andrew, hi. Because I feel inspired to play something else from your play. Okay, okay, that's great. <laughs> I think using the metronome is a great tool, but it's not the only tool. All of the answers are really in the music. What does it mean to live in a groove, be in a groove? Until next time, happy practicing.